Welcome to Fishing Britain. Wow, what a difference a week makes. Fantastic weather, which means we've been able to go out filming in great conditions and catch some special fish. And boy, we've got some doozies for you this week. We catch up with Dave Harrell at Simmons Yacht on the Y to talk all things river fishing. But first, I'm after some monster trout. We've all heard the saying that size doesn't matter, but to us anglers, we know when it comes to fish, it matters a lot. We're at Lechlade Fishery in the Cotswolds, and we have heard that there are brownies in here up to 20 pounds. Rob, the fishery manager, tells us a little more about how they grow these titans. They'll come up from the raceways, which are on beyond there. All our fish from about two and a half, three pounds, we'll bring them up, in, up into the earth ponds. Um, we have about 8,000 a year that we rear on for literally, maybe, you know, maybe a few more. Yeah. Um, and then we'll rear them just literally as big as we can in the, in the time we've got. Five period. pounder, how old is it? Um, about two and a half, three, um, for the brownies. Yeah. We grow them slightly slower. They transfer a lot more um, feed into muscle if you feed them slow. As well, if you feed them, you know, they just end up big fat as well. Yeah. You know, and they don't fight as hard. Our fish, you know, especially the brownies, we keep them lean and they, you know, they look beautiful. They come out and they're really decent, hard fighting fish. Nice backhand. It is, yeah, it's here, yeah, go on, go on. <laughs> Give it a go. What is that? It's not as easy as it looks. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm holding better than the middle. Hey, more. That's not too bad. There we go. It's all in the wrist, Hal. Right, how do we fish for these juggernauts? Before we start fishing, let me talk you through the couple of the rigs. Now, the first one is a fast sinking line. Um, this is from advice from the guys that run the place, and this is what a lot of the good local anglers do. Fast sinking line, die three, die five. This is die five sweep, and then eight foot a leader, and then I've been advised, the nastier, the better. Right, it's a cat's whisker. It's got a few rubber legs on the back there, pearl in there. Now, if you look at the size of that, I've been told it might be too small, right? So if you're coming to Letchlade, make sure that you're prepared with inch, inch and a half size zonkers, things like that, because these big browns, they want a gold full. So that's one setup, and that's what I'm gonna fish with. But just in case, what I've also got set up is a nine and a half foot, six weight, floating line, and then on the end of the business, fluorocarbon. Again, I've, I've, I've upped the fluorocarbon. Both sets are 10 pound, and then I've just put a stalking bug. And the reason for this, this is set up, is while I'm fishing away, if I spot a fish cruising the margins, I can just drop that rod out of the way, or rip the fly line in, just leave it down, pick this one up, and just drop the fly. Because how many times have you been fishing, and you're fishing out there, and then you see fish cruising the margin, but by the time you change tactics, change flies and this, that and the other, well there's a little tip for you, have the spare rod ready to go, even the line out, the fly ready to go, fish comes, just pop it on his head. Right, that's the rigs, now it's down to the fishing. I'm just pulling weeds from, here we go, big fish. Look at that, really slow on the deck. Easy. <laughs> I tell you what. They told me there was big browns in here. I didn't tell me there's such big rainbows in here. Have a look at this. Look at that. Oh. Whoa, calm down, get off my rod. It's lean, it's not a fat stocky, it's full of muscle and full of power. It seems to be lunchtime and they're biting well. One of today's lech laid anglers is Matt, yes, exactly. and he's just found his fourth fish. While you were watching him netting the fish in the boat, you hooked one yourself. Well done. Ooh, this 
It's not a brownie, but it's a brownie. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, this is great. Rainbows being caught all over the place on the boat, on the bank opposite, and that was a great fight I had. But we could do this all day, casting out blind, and you don't know what's going to take your fly. And what am I here for? Well, I'm going to try and catch a big brown. So this rod's going to go away, and I'm going to get the other rod, the stalking rod, and try and creep around the bank and target a big brown. Right, stalking. Now, not ideal conditions today. It's overcast. I prefer it when it's really, really sunny so you can use the shadows, but you've got to be on your guard. It could be a split second. When you scan in, take your time, try and use as much shadows to your advantage, but you've got to be mobile. Be careful, be courteous to other anglers, watch where they are, don't creep up on their territory, but there's plenty of room around here. There's nobody in the whole of this bay. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to slowly walk in. Now, how often do you walk up to a peg on a fish and suddenly whoosh, you spook a fish? What you're going to try and do is not scare them. Walk in slowly, use the cover behind you. <laughs> I wish there were some leaves on the trees, but just use that to your advantage and just stay back. I'm just like a German pointer. If I see a fish, I just freeze. <laughs> Shadow just came along there and I thought, ah, take your time. It is patience and it can be quite rewarding. This is the way that the big fish are caught, if you can spot them. If you can spot them, then you've got a chance. But you have to be softly, softly, can't you, monkey? It's a carp. It is, it is, honest. A monster carp. I've stalked three quarters of the lake. I haven't even seen a fish. Now, rather than walking all the way back or actually going into the private section, which is at the top end, um, no public are allowed to go there. Well, we've actually had a special dispensation if we want to go and film. Apparently, that's where everybody else goes and films. But we're not going to do that. We're going to fish where everybody else is allowed to fish. And have a look at this. Aaron told me it's the oldest form of ferrying, but he'd know these things. That's all I can see is a rickety piece of wood and some string. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Heave ho. That's how you do it. <laughs> I've just seen a fish just cruise along the bank. I've just dropped a little buzzer on him. <laughs> oh, look. Oh, I tell you what, he's just about to wake up, actually. That thing. Wait, I've got the net already. <laughs> oh, my God, fathers. I don't think the net is big enough. That's why people come to Let's Say. Big, monster, hard fighting rainbows. Oh, gorgeous. What a brace of fish. And I tell you what, great sport. One on the lures and the other one stalking. But we failed to catch our target species, the big brown. And the problem is brownies are moody. When they're on, boy, they're on. But when they're off, they're impossible. So the word with that is perseverance. Keep coming back until you get that special day when they're on and you'll get your 20. <laughs> I see the appeal of carp fishing now. So you don't have to take a catch home with you. 
Here's David with the news. This is Fishing Britain News. A Scottish fish farm has lost 155,000 salmon because of the extreme weather. Meridian Salmon Group in Shetland blamed damage caused to fish cages by recent strong winds and heavy seas. Some local anglers claim that fish could contaminate local stocks of Atlantic salmon by interbreeding with them. Others are looking forward to the best salmon season in years. Cast for Life is back again for 2014. Cancer Research UK and Corda Developments are calling on the anglers of the UK to get caught up in the action. Corda wants anglers to organise their own Cast for Life fundraising fishing tournament. Corda will be donating 40 goodie bags, each worth about £250, to the first 40 tournaments that are organised to beat cancer. Visit corda.co.uk forward slash cast for life. The Guinness World of Records may have turned its back on fishing and shooting, but there are plenty others who haven't. In the USA, the 11th annual IGFA World Record Achievements Award is due to take place on the 26th of April. Visit IGFA.org. An event is helping to hook US Army veterans onto fly fishing. A fly tying marathon held at the National Museum of the Marine Corps in Quantico, Virginia, tied 716 flies in eight hours, enough to provide veterans all over the country with supplies for free fly fishing trips. With the Irish salmon fishing season just underway, so is a new operation. The new multi-agency initiative was launched at the Riverbush Salmon Station. The operation aims to combat fish poaching and to protect fish stocks across Northern Ireland. It focuses on encouraging the public to report suspected fish poaching and enforcing fishing regulations. And finally, a great white shark is swimming through new, unexplored waters. Researchers say she is set to make history as the first white shark to cross the Atlantic Ocean. Named Lydia, the 14-foot female shark was last spotted by satellite tagging organisation OCARC, a thousand miles from the coast of County Cork and Cornwall, just above the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. There have been reports of great whites of Cornwall and Wales in recent years. However, swimming that far in those waters is an uncommon behavioural and migratory pattern for the species. You are now up to date with Fishing Britain News. Fishing for facts, landing the story. Charlie Jacoby here, this is my weekly roundup of the best fishing on YouTube. Inspired by last week's Welsh piece where we claimed they were the world's only landlocked Atlantic salmon, Andreas Eberg sends in his film where he is fishing for ditto in Lake Vettern, the second largest lake in Sweden. He is using a single-handed rod from what continentals like to refer to as a belly boat, but then with pronunciation like mine, who am I to complain what they call it? Nash TV is out after Carl and Alex, who are at Specimen Tanyard's Fishery in Sussex on the hunt for corpulent carp. 24 hours of fun, adventure and lovely fish await them. Bubbly Bombshell Babs is back. Her world of fishing series takes her to Ireland after salmon with fly and spinner in German. But ain't she great? Team Hajmat is numbers two cool, numbers four school ice fishing for big pikes, plural but with English subtitles. The very excellent canalgratis.se has Pontus and Mile or Millie out bunking school in order to go predator fishing, a sentiment we espouse. It's Truancy Central here. First time surf fishing to Panka Canyon State Beach, Southern California comes from John's Fishing Channel who, despite the semblance of facial hair, should defo be in class staring out of the window thinking about it not doing it. He has a new episode every Thursday, mostly chasing muskies, largemouth, smallmouth, walleye and panned fish but not examination results. Good lad. Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, has come up with an ASCSR fish autonomous self-contained soft robotic. Still for all those who have spent weeks trying to catch Scottish salmon without success, it could save the West Coast rivers. Dot, dot, dot. Moving south, Strobel Lake by Todd Moan. Argentina fly fishing is Catch Magazine's gorgeous trout fishing film of the week from Estancia Laguna Verde Lodge, located in Patagonia. This is not the soft, girly rivers around San Martín or Junín de las Andes. This is hard, backsided, high Andean lago fishing and still demanding only the most exacting tackle and technique. I'm missing it already. 
And finally, pity poor Mikey Bowles. This is what it looks like to strike Miss and get a one and a half ounce tungsten weight in the head at speed. See how his son in the background just carries on fishing. Kids a click on the links to watch the videos or you will find them in this film's description if you would like to send in a video for hooked on youtube ping me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv we've come to simmons yacht and we're on the river y and we're happy to say that it's now safely back in its banks it's still ripping through though and if one man can tame it it's world record holding uber match fisherman dave harrell not just content on fishing our wonderful rivers, he set up an entire competition called Riverfest, and he tells us all about it. Well, when, um, when I was asked to become an ambassador for the Angling Trust, um, I, I wanted to put something back into it, and river fishing has always been my main passion. And, um, and, and I, I, for a long time I thought about creating an event that embraces lots of different rivers. You know, culminating in a big, big money final. So, you know, what we've seen over the last few years has been a lot of sort of commercial fisheries uh, staging big money events, but nothing for river anglers. So, uh, River Fest was sort of created on the back of me being a part of Angling Trust. We've created um, 20 qualifiers uh, that start this coming season. They start in June, run 20 consecutive weeks. Uh, three anglers get through to the final from each. Um, in the final at the moment, there'll be at least £29,000 paid out. Right. Um, the winner will pick up um, £12,000. I mean, last year, last year's winner, Spud Murphy, picked up £10,000. We, we've changed the, the format slightly in as much as, like, some, last year we had some of the matches over Saturdays and Sundays. This time, you've just got 20 weeks on the spin from June the 22nd till no, early November. And, uh, and we've got venues like the River Calder, we've got the River Swale we've, uh, up in Yorkshire, we've got the, 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 the Yorkshire Roos, we've got the Yare over in East Anglia, the Severn, the Trents, there's one on the middle Y here, um, the Thames, you know, you name it, the, the, there's a qualifier then. You know, we invite other clubs to get involved in associations because we're always looking at new venues as well for next year. You see, there's too many people out there will tell you that no one wants to fish rivers. It's ever such an easy expression that people use. And to be honest, whilst, okay, a lot of people have switched across to fishing commercial fisheries, the stacks of people want to fish natural waters. And it's only a case really of creating events for them. You know, if no one creates an event on a river, then you're not going to have anybody fishing a river competition, are you? So, um, you know, Riverfest has proven, you know, we, we sold 1,200 tickets last year and we'll do the same again this year. Um, and it will become bigger and bigger. I mean, my, my, my ambition over the next few years is to announce the final where the winner is going to get £20,000. Is there a lot more skill in river angling? Well, I think so. I mean, just going back to on the river fest side of it, it's not a case of trying to set up in competition. It's, it's really catering for what people want, right? I'm not into this us and them situation because I think every venue and every type of fishing has got you know, some anglers to suit it, if you like. But. Um, Skill facts, yeah. I mean, river fishing is a lot more difficult because it's not as uniform, is it? You know, I mean, the river today. You know, if we were fishing here in August on a low play, we'd, we'd fish it completely different yeah. to how we're going to fish today. You know, so I, I, I love the skill factor of it. I never, you never quite know what's going to happen. What you find, I mean, I think the average age of river anglers in competition is not young. You know, we could do some more younger anglers coming in and hopefully creating events like this or tempting them in just just through the money factor of it. But. Um, yeah, loads of good anglers won a part of this this year. You know, I mean, I think you'll, you'll see a lot of the England team wanted to take part in it. And, um, you know, I've even had people from abroad. I mean, I mean, wouldn't it be nice if we can get Riverfest European? That's my next sort of ambition as well with it. <laughs> yeah, why not? You know, we could, have, we could have it in Italy. I mean, I've got friends in Italy and France that could probably win qualifiers. And then you could have, like, you know, a grand European Riverfest final with 100,000 to the winner. Who knows, you know? Well, the, the entry is done um, through an entry form that's going to be printed in the Angling Weeklies and the Times and the Mail. Um, there's also going to be an entry form um, that's downloadable from the Angling Trust website. And basically all you need to do is check through the list, you've got 20 different venues, uh, you pay your £25 entry, send your form off, and I think it's important that anglers do it quickly because yeah. it's going to sell out fast. Um, and then really your tickets come back, you're going to get your tickets back by sort of April time, I would think maybe May. And then you just turn up for your qualifiers. So um, when, when are the entries available? From the 18th of March, that's when it goes live. Um, 
and, and again, I'm and if they haven't done it by 20th of March, they will probably lose. Well, <laughs> there's a good chance, I think. You know, so it was, it was a little bit slow on one or two of the venues last year, but I mean, some even last year sold out within a week. So yeah. you know, it's going to go fast. So then, Dave, as you have the credentials, show us what you're made of and catch us a fish. Are there any in there? Oh, very good, Dave. Thank you very much. But it's going to take you a while to get a match winning weight with that one. And we've got a very busy schedule, don't you know? Come on, catch us something a little bit more impressive. Good heavens. Once again, proving that Dave Harrell is indeed the king of the rivers. Well done, that man. Well, folks, that's it for another week. I hope you've enjoyed the programme. If you have, hit that subscribe button. And for all you sea anglers out there, keep watching because we're sending our own 007 out in a boat to film some stuff for you. Let's hope he's not wearing his wetsuit. And if you want to keep up to date with all the other programmes on the channel, please go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv and fill out that constant contact form. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter. I'll see you next week on Fishing Britain.